Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets for Monday, uh, the 18th of April 2016. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Also, download this new uh, app that's been launched by them uh, at uh, the Google Play and the Apple Store. Uh, you can certainly download it at www.tradesignaler.com, folks. Okay. And uh, also, with regards to uh, CFDs.com, be sure to visit the site. Uh, open a trading account and certainly uh, be uh, privileged with the 25% uh, cash bonus offer, a very generous one that's, uh, that's uh, currently available for all new trading accounts. So those that are interested, certainly open accounts, send me an email, I can get that applied for you. Okay, right, in terms of trading, uh, let's try and focus on that, folks, because that's what we do uh, for a living. Okay, so in terms of uh, the markets, let's see exactly where they're positioned at present. Asian markets flushed overnight, as we all know. Uh, the Nikkei down 500 points by minus 3%. The Hang Seng, the Shanghai, the um, the Australian markets all down negative, and we all know why. Uh, I think there's a joke this morning. There's a pun going around. Much ado about nothing. Okay, so much ado about nothing, or much ado about nothing. So basically, Doha meaning of over the weekend certainly uh, a damp squib, uh, basically a failure uh, uh, and uh, a disappointment given the fact that uh, obviously oil prices uh, or an agreement was uh, was not reached. And uh, if those of you that watch my videos, you already knew from intermarket analysis perspective, given the fact that the UST CAD was into support, Aussie and Kiwi into resistance, FTSE into resistance, oil into resistance, etc., etc. Okay, so everything was already indicating that. Uh, and uh, given the, especially given the fact that we had the uh, earthquakes uh, in Japan, unfortunately, uh, several people have died. So prayers and thoughts go out to them. Also in Ecuador as well, I think the, the number, the death toll, I think it's exceeded 300 now. So certainly uh, prayers and thoughts go out to them as well. And may God give them patience in these trying times. Uh, again, it's a test from God. So please, uh, we pray that uh, God gives them patience uh, and endurance. And uh, may God raise their ranks, okay, uh, amongst those that are the patient. Okay, so now with regards to the, um, the actual markets, again, Asian markets flushed overnight. So obviously a risk of tone. Uh, that obviously fed through into uh, European session. Now, in terms of economic data out this morning, let's just go through that as well, which is important from my perspective, as always. Uh, fundamentals are very, very important, folks. Okay, so uh, inflation data out of New Zealand overnight has kept the uh, the Kiwi bid. Uh, so uh, rally in the Kiwi is certainly distorted to a large extent, so bear that in mind, uh, because it shrugged off the weaker oil price. House price is... Uh House prices in um, in China certainly higher, so again helping the yuan. Uh, now the yuan fix I think was slightly stronger as well. Uh, new more motor vehicle sales in Australia stronger than expected. Not not much uh, concern there in terms of economic data really, folks. Okay, the only one that I would uh, really focus on is the Bundesbank. Uh, now the Bundesbank did state, and this is quite important. Um, forecast i'll read this out to you it expects a loss of momentum in q2 so bearish okay sees negative inflation likely in spring so again deflation all down commodities down less demand deflation basically means lack of demand folks okay so again it should be considered bearish but because of the qe nature of these markets and the anticipation of more qe and the free money that's thrown the markets based on that deflation it certainly helps equity markets high to a large extent but if we get a loss of momentum then obviously it's negative could see a slight rise in unemployment in the coming months okay again that's negative so any rise in unemployment is certainly negative for the economy as we all know Again, QE certainly is a different ball game, so let's just take all that to a side for now. There is no evident risk of increasing second round effects in Germany, so slightly positive. Q1 GDP could be tangibly above 0.3%, so slightly positive. But overall, given the fact that unemployment and uh, obviously a loss of economic momentum uh, is, uh, is certainly perceived as being bearish, okay, folks? So therefore, Bundesbank certainly bearish. Now, the other factors as well, let's just uh, sum them all up, folks, and you'll realize yourself. Uh, BHP CEO Brexit concerns, okay, so highlighting Brexit concerns. Oil output freeze, as we all know, is an absolute failure, and therefore that alone is a, a risk of tone because the commodities obviously were a bit higher in expectations of that obviously uh, coming through. Saudi stocks smoked, I think they were down 3% as well. Brexit concerns, given the fact that there's fiscal concerns in um, in Spain, from Spain to, uh, to Greece, and uh, obviously uh, any other member of the European Union... Uh, were to have any fiscal problems and that obviously exacerbates the problem in Greece so hence the reason why I call it the fiscal concerns as we all know the earthquakes in Ecuador and Japan okay ECB hawkish so there was an article out over the weekend 
that they are not attempting to know they are uh, concerned about the the uh, the euro going higher and always their aim to make it go lower okay g20 concerned about growth so again so cause for concern now repatriation in japan given the fact that the the death the damage toll is um, is estimated to be around 10 billion dollars so again that's certainly causing the right repatriation concept is causing the uh, the yen to strengthen to a large extent uh, uk retail sales football certainly falls imf downgrade brazil impeachment as well again that's a negative factor folks again given, given the fact that uh, obviously um, reduces growth and reduces stability in that area in that region and that obviously means less demand for products and services in europe coming from that region okay uh, the china credit rating cut as well that was a cause of concern also chinese banks certainly put on a credit watch negative okay german growth uh, like i've already mentioned expected to be bearish so everything is bearish this morning it's very hard for me to argue any anything in the bullish camp yes i did go along at one point i rode the rally on the euro stocks but that certainly is over now okay right okay uh, now let's go on to technicals folks let's uh, wrap this up in terms of technicals let's bring up the euro stocks first of all euro stocks at the moment is holding that uh, resistance zone at 3060 we're currently in a bear flag scenario so basically we're consolidating here and then looking to potentially retest the lows again so don't be surprised if you are going to go lower 10 minutes on the euro stocks again that unfilled gap will remain open will not close due to the fact that uh, as we all know due to the um, uh, opec concerns dominating so therefore don't expect that gap to close and therefore we are looking to potentially go lower back down to that 3030 potentially 3015 level again on the euro stock so that means it's negative for the uh, european indices especially given the fact that euro usd now is back above 1.3 now the german dax very impressive okay very very impressive compared to its uh, european peers it actually closed the gap which is very impressive okay folks so not only did it close the gap it actually exceeded that as well so very impressive but for now gap fill certainly will hold as resistance well this is a prime example of why i do not trade the german dax it just it, there's no logic in it at all and it very rarely does it respect fundamentals so uh, from my perspective german dax if you're a new trader stay af as far away as you can from that index trade the euro stocks instead you'll find that's more stab stable in terms of technicals and fundamentals and that's why i trade the euro stocks and the cac okay much more much more calm much more calm collective okay so 10 minute chart certainly is into resistance 60 minute chart let's just bring this up gap fill resistance obviously we have horizontal resistance at 10 100 so watch out for that the daily chart of the german dax at the moment again still holding that resistance zone but again having said that today's price action very impressive folks given the fact that uh, we had such bearish negative headlines risk sentiment off and uh, yet the german market certainly manages to recover so that may well be the case with the nasdaq as well okay right uh, the french cac now let's just ring up the cac, CAC again holding that resistance zone even with the euro at 1.13 it still isn't going into a risk off mode uh, impressive a uh, 60 minute chart again has closed a gap compared to its peers and you do have resistance at the uh, four five hundred zone so very impressive move uh, again like i said it's actually managed to close that gap which is pretty phenomenal okay and um, given the uh, bearish obviously arguments that we have in this market so very very impressive to say the least okay but yes you are into gap fill resistance so you've, you've thrusted from a low of 4425 up to 4590 now and we are looking to potentially close that gap so bear that in mind okay in terms of the french cac right the FTSE 100 now the last index the last index at the moment as we all know oil prices etc causing a uh, a, we a weakness on the FTSE previous support equals resistance on the FTSE so therefore looking to potentially move lower and looking to retest this diagonal trend line although you do have a bottoming tail that certainly needs to be respected daily chart still holding that resistance on okay looking at holding resistance and the 10 minute chart has this diagonal trend line resistance so again looking to potentially flush now you are you do you are creating this potential mini hns if i just bring up a five minute chart and you certainly seem to be uh, potentially coming into fruition now so your left shoulder is there your head is there and then your right shoulder there and then obviously down you go okay so that's basically where we stand in terms of the uh, the actual FTSE 100 okay so very very important watch out for that zone okay again FTSE itself remains weak i'm looking at a uh, target of around 6300 on the FTSE before i start to potentially go bullish but for now looking at 6300 six uh, 6300 definitely and a potential retest of that uh, support are 6260 as well so that certainly isn't out in the equation 
Okay, so looking for weakness on the FTSE 100 and European indices in general. Okay, uh, like I said, be sure to visit CFDs.com specialist in spread betting and CFD brokerage and up to two and a half thousand pounds with their 25% cash bonus offer. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye now.